Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscherini and for today's lesson, today we're going to talk about measuring volume. In the previous lessons, we have defined what is the mass of an object and how to measure it. We also defined the volume of an object. Today we're going to see how we can measure the volume of the objects. Actually, today we're going to see how we can calculate the volume of a regular shaped solid then we'll move on to see how we can measure the volume of a liquid. And finally, we're going to um, put these two pieces of knowledge together, uh, especially this one, in order to calculate the volume of an irregular shaped solid. And I really want to stress the difference between measuring. When measure, I really mean you directly use um, a measuring tool to find uh, a quantity. In the case of calculation means it's what we can say an indirect measurement. So we do some measurements first and then we combine them together to get our result. So let's start with the easiest case, the volume of a regular shaped solid. And you can see already here an example. Now, uh, for instance, here we have a cube, but we could have a cuboid, any other regular shape. But let, let's stick to cubes and cuboids. Now, uh, in order to find the volume of a regular shaped solid, um, rather than directly uh, uh, find the volume of a whole thing, what we can do, we can measure its dimensions. As you can see here, uh, I um, shown with these arrows the three dimensions of a cuboid, and you can call them any way you want. In this case, I, I call them length, width, and height. And different exercises, different textbooks, they have different names. It doesn't really matter as long as they are the three dimensions of your objects. So your task select the most appropriate measuring tool to find these three values and then combine them together with this formula. And you see the volume of our regular shaped solid will be the length times the width times the height. Let's see now how we can find the volume of a liquid. In the case of a volume liquid, we can actually do a direct measurement. So to find the volume of a liquid, we can use what we call a measuring cylinder. And you can see here an example. In class, we're going to see that measuring cylinders come in different sizes with different ranges and precision. And normally in the measuring cylinders, at least we're going to use in class, they will have a reading, a reading in milliliters or in cubic centimeters. And cubic centimeters are exactly the same amount. Now, this will not be the case um, in the case of a lick in the measuring cylinders we're going to use, but especially in chemistry, uh, you, uh, where you have very, very narrow containers, what you can observe is something called the menis meniscus is this shape that your liquid takes. It depends on the kind of liquid. Mo most of the case you have something which is water or water solution. So you have something like this. And at that point, if you have a very precise um, scale on your uh, container, you might have you might be at loss, okay, which one is the correct reading? Okay, as you can see here, this dashed line gives you the correct reading. So if you have a meniscus like this, the bottom part is your reading. If you have a meniscus like this, the uh, top part is your correct reading. And of course, I forgot to tell you that in a case of a liquid, you simply have to pour carefully of course the liquid inside the container inside the measuring cylinder just simply look at the numbers on the scale and you'll have your volume now knowing how to find the volume of a liquid using a measuring cylinder cylinder comes in handy when you find yourself with an irregular shaped soil so let's imagine I just take a very random object now like a stone or any pebble out in uh, in the field. Now, of course, geometry cannot help us here because the shape is far from being regular. So what you can do here is an indirect measurement uh, made, uh, so the calculation made by combining two different uh, measurements. And let's break it down to it uh, to the various steps. In the first steps, you you select an appropriate measuring cylinder, so the measuring cylinder which is wide enough 
to accommodate your object. And what do you do? You select a liquid. Most of the time it will be water, but it will not always be the case. And you fill it up. Normally, the good, the, uh, what I suggest is you fill it up just enough to eventually cover your solid. And then you, at this point, you measure the volume of a liquid. You see, I call it here V1. In the next step, what we're going to do, we're going to take our stone and, or whatever is our regular shaped solid, of course, we're going to gently lower it into our measuring cylinder. You don't want to drop it. You don't want to spill your liquid. This will change the outcome of your measurements. At this point, what happens? Of course, the level of the liquid will go up, so you'll have a new reading. I'll call it V2. And what is V2? V2 is the volume of the liquid and the stone. And if you look at these two measurements, it's pretty obvious now how you should be proceeding. Of course, the volume of the stone by itself will be simply the difference between these two readings, between V2 and V1. And just to leave you on a historical note, you know, I love to tell you um, uh, tales about the history of physics. This method, uh, at least the, the start of this method, was invented by this guy here, Vecchisius, in modern day Sicily. This is Archimedes, when he solved the famous problem of a crown by using a method very similar to this one. But I will tell you more about this in class. Now, I told you that today's lesson was about volume, but really I want to finish by completing our uh, investigation on liquids, because we saw how to find the volume of a liquid. But how about the mass of a liquid? Because it's very straightforward to find the mass of a solid. You just take a, an appropriate balance, put the object on top of a balance, and you get your reading. You can't do the same with a liquid, because a liquid needs a container. So let's imagine you have a nice fiasco of Chianti. Of course, most of you are underage, so uh, maybe it's not appropriate for you. But let's imagine you just want to know how much wine. I'm talking about the mass. The volume is usually written on the board. So again, you need to go through two steps. You will need, again, a container, so something big enough uh, um, to contain all the liquid inside your fiasco of Chianti. And what are you going to do? You're going to put it on top of a balance. So you take your empty container, you find the mass, we're going to call this M1. So what is the next step? At this, point, at this step, you need to have your liquid. So you need to open the bottle, you need to pour all the wine inside your measuring center, don't drink it, you're not allowed to. And now you're going to put again your container now with a liquid on top of your balance. And what you'll get here is a new reading. And this reading will be the mass of a container and the liquid. In a similar fashion, and the way we found the volume of an irregular shaped solid, it's obvious that the mass of a wine will be simply the difference between these two reads. So it's just, just to summarize, if you want to find the mass of a liquid, first you need to find the mass of an empty container. And that's all for today. Goodbye to next lesson from Mr. Boscarini.